Today's video is a review of the Gerodo X2 Indoor Spin Bike. It retails for $469 and is currently on sale for $439 on their site. It has a magnetic resistance belt drive system for a smooth and nearly silent ride. With this bike, you can follow along to Peloton classes for a fraction of the cost. This bike obviously is about a quarter of the price of a Peloton bike and you can still get a really good workout. While there is no resistance gauge on this bike, giving you a numerical representation of your effort, you can purchase a separate one on Etsy for $25. This will allow you to adjust and follow along to Peloton classes, matching the resistance the instructors are calling out. Today's video will be broken down into the following topic areas. I'm first going to go over details on this bike. I'm also going to go through the assembly process. Next, I'm going to go over my first impression. And lastly, I'm going to wrap up with my overall opinion. The product dimensions are 42.9 inches in length, 19.7 inches in width, and 42.5 inches in height. It has a solid 35-pound flywheel with an aluminum cover. It also has steel toe-caged pedals with adjustable straps to fit various shoe sizes. There's a multi-use holder for your tablet, phone, water bottle, hand weights, etc. It also has a digital monitor for tracking workout data. There are two transportation wheels in the front for easy movement. This bike is adjustable at four places. The handlebar can be adjusted up or down, forward and backwards, and the seat can be adjusted up and down, forward and backwards as well. The recommended inseam range for the seat is 27.5 inches minimum and 36.2 inches maximum. This bike has a 300 pound max recommended weight. It has a one year free replacement for all parts. So now I'm going to talk about the assembly process. This bike has a net weight of 94 pounds and a gross weight of 108 pounds. Here, I've laid out all the bike components. Here's the included toolkit, as well as the user guide. The first step is to attach the front stabilizer to the main frame with two sets of flat washers, domed nuts, and carriage bolts. Next, we're gonna do the same process with the rear stabilizer. The next step is to insert the vertical seat post into the seat post tube of the mainframe. Here I'm just adjusting the height. From there, I'm screwing in the seat slider and attaching the seat on top. Next, I'm adjusting the seat angle and tightening the screws. Generally, I like my seat to be parallel to the floor. Moving on to the front of the bike, we're going to insert the handlebar post into the handlebar post tube of the main frame. Next, we're going to attach the handlebar on the handlebar post with a knob and a flat washer. Now, we're going to install the pedals. They are designated left and right with the corresponding stickers. For the right, we're going to turn it clockwise. To install the left pedal, we're going to turn that counterclockwise. The last step is to attach the monitor, plug in the corresponding cables, and you're all ready to go. While this bike does not have a numerical scale for the resistance numbers as you adjust it throughout the ride, there is a resistance gauge product on Etsy, which I would recommend if you'd like to match the resistance that the Peloton instructors are calling out. I turn the knob to the right to increase the resistance, which will change the number on the scale right here. And if you turn it to the left, it will obviously decrease the resistance as shown right here. Installation for this product just took a few minutes 
and they also have a video demonstration of the installation via a QR code on the handout. This product seems to be 3D printed and is quite lightweight. If you're interested in this resistance gauge, I'll leave the link for it in the description box below. So I'm in the middle of a 30 minute live DJ ride with Cody Rigsby on the Peloton app. There's just a few things that I wanna mention right off the bat. So currently I'm wearing sneakers with this bike. Of course you could wear any shoe. I have tried it with sandals, but it doesn't give you the same support. Currently I have the handlebars adjusted to the closest position to myself, as you can see right here. I would say the handlebars are a little bit further out than the Peloton. The handlebars have a nice matte finish. One downside is that they don't have heart rate sensors, but to me that doesn't really matter because I do wear an Apple Watch, which tracks my heart rate as is. If you are following along to a workout and using your phone or tablet, there's not really a place for a tablet. This portion obviously would fit my phone. It is in the vertical position, so you can't change it to the horizontal position if you wanna see like a larger screen. There's no place to really put your phone that would be stable. You could probably prop it up like this, but I would be worried that it might fall. This is how loud the bike sounds when pedaling. It is a magnetic resistance, so that will make it quieter than a friction resistance bike. The toe cages right here aren't adjustable in terms of length, so if you do have a larger foot size, you can't really adjust that. Also, there is no portion right here. If you wanna wear spin shoes with cleats, there's no place to clip in the cleats. But honestly, it doesn't matter because it does feel quite sturdy while using sneakers, and I do like the raised portion right here. It does give a bit of friction for your foot to stick onto. I do like that the stabilizers feel quite sturdy. As you can see, they can't budge and it's a really thick material. The seat is also well cushioned and doesn't chafe against my legs. I would say it's really comparable to the Peloton. You may recognize on the side over here, I have the Gerodo IW9 treadmill. I am trying to store it underneath the bed, but the clearance isn't tall enough. Obviously this portion sticks out, but at least I can tuck part of it away. So now for my overall opinion on this bike, at a quarter of the price of a Peloton, I would say this is worth your money. I love that it has a magnetic resistance, giving you a smooth and nearly silent ride, and it also has a sturdy frame. There's no need to buy spin shoes for this bike, as you can wear sneakers with it. And lastly, there's no monthly membership required, unlike the Peloton, which requires a $39 per month membership to use their classes. If you use a Peloton app with a non-Peloton bike, it's only $12.99 per month for unlimited access to all their classes in their library. So anyways, that should do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're not already, and comment down below what are your thoughts on this bike. Do you feel it's worth it for the price point, or would you prefer to purchase a Peloton?